the past week saw Mercedes abandon plans to go all electric by 2030, and Apple announced the cancellation of its own much-anticipated electric vehicle. This follows Ford's decision in January to cut production of its F-150 Lightning by half, Audi's plans to pull back on its electric vehicle rollout, and numerous other major manufacturers either cutting EV production or delaying further investment. The very straightforward reason for this is that anticipated demand isn't matching up to reality as consumers look to other options. January saw a 26% decline in electric car sales globally from December and a massive 42% decline in Europe, with sales dropping from 160,000 units to 92,000. Manufacturers' production plans are simply changing to reflect this lower-than-expected demand. But while disappointing for supporters of EVs, investors and the government's backing adoption, this really shouldn't come as a surprise. Manufacturers have been saying this for months, the demand isn't there. Ford announced F-150 Lightning production cuts of 50% for 2024, citing lower-than-expected demand. In September, Volkswagen explained that they will be cutting production of EVs at two plants in Germany due to weaker demand, and Mercedes has shifted from plans to go all EV by 2030 to just 50%, explaining that customers and market conditions will set the pace of the transformation. And Aston Martin this week said they were delaying the release of its first electric car, with Lawrence Stroll explaining, we believe consumer demand was just not at the pace of all the analysts and the politicians. GM and Audi are also pushing back timelines, while Elon Musk's Tesla said growth would be notably lower in 2024. Exactly why consumers aren't turning to EVs in the expected numbers is something governments and manufacturers will have to work to understand. Ford mentions patchy charger networks. Polling has suggested range anxiety and concerns about finding a charger list high among concerns. Higher than expected repair costs and longer repair times also factor in, which have led to increased insurance costs. One UK insurance broker, Howden Group Holdings, has reported EVs now cost twice as much to insure as petrol vehicles. And purchase price is also a factor, with EVs costing more than their petrol equivalent. But if EV adoption is already slowing, what does this mean for the future of EVs and the companies that make them? Toyota's chairman has an answer. A long-term skeptic of EVs, Akio Toyoda has long maintained it's a mistake to focus only on EVs, excluding other options. And he believes EVs will never have more than a 30% market share. Instead, he argues hybrids and hydrogen cars are the way forward, and this is where Toyota has been putting its money. Coincidentally, while Tesla's share price is slightly down over the past year, Toyota's has jumped 91%. In fact, rising demand for hybrids and a dissatisfaction with EVs is a recurring theme. In Europe, EV market share for new sales dropped from 14.6% to 10.9% from December to January, while the market share of hybrids dropped from 25.8% to 28.8%. When Ford last year announced the delay of a $12 billion investment in electric vehicles and a 50% production cut for the F-150 Lightning, the company at the same time revealed plans to double production of its F-150 Hybrid, and Ford's all-electric sales dropped 11% in January, while hybrid sales increased 43%. What happens now with EVs isn't clear, but with the EU and UK planning to ban all combustion cars by 2035 and the US pushing manufacturers into making more EVs, there's a very clear disconnect between government policy and consumer demand.